My name is James and I paint minis. This is Spoon 37 Minis. So last time you saw the Tyranid Hive Tyrant, we just done one coat of deep blue on the carapace plates. Uh, now we're going to do a second coat of the exact same colour, deep blue, from the Army Painter. Now, in much the same manner as before, I'm going over the upper leg plates first, as these are basically larger and easier to paint than the lower leg plates. But I'm trying to paint a slightly smaller area, so there should be more of a graduation from the sort of black to a dark blue colour. So there should be like a, a thin one coat and then two coats beyond that as you get towards the edge of each plate. And so it should gradually fade from black to blue. That's the idea. Now if you watch the previous video you'll notice I'm not making so much of an effort to do kind of lines heading down towards the edge of the plate. This is simply because this area will be partially covered by future lines so it'll only show very briefly so I'm just doing a line at the edge of each plate and maybe up at the edges and then not worrying too much and then on the lower leg plates I will just be doing a thin line as a sort of foundation for lighter colours because not much of this will be visible afterwards so I'm not too worried about it. I just want to avoid getting it in the recess so it has to be on the raised edge not the recess. despite appearances I am actually trying to show this to the camera uh, it's just I've got this idea to do a kind of eye level view of the model and sometimes I have to tip it away from the camera in order to paint some of the more difficult to reach places hopefully I'll be able to show you more of what I'm doing as this goes on so sorry about those few seconds of footage but I'm hoping it will be better for the rest of it Now I'm not going too crazy on these lower leg plates because we've already done one coat I don't have to make sure that absolutely every speck of every plate is uh, covered but I do have to just make sure that I go over it briefly in order to reinforce the colour you will gradually notice as the video goes on any area that I've already painted is already a little bit more vibrant and clearer with more contrast than the rest of the model where it only has one coat of blue. onto the upper leg plates on the other leg and as you can see I am doing a kind of vertical line if you will at the edges and in the center but otherwise I'm just doing a horizontal line at the bottom of each plate sort of following the contour it's not literally horizontal but you know what I mean uh, just following the contour of each plate to reinforce it 
I mean, this is the whole point of doing a second coat of any paint because the paints are slightly transparent. Going over it a second time just gives you a more vibrant color that has better coverage and is a little bit more opaque. That pretty much wraps up the leg plates, so moving on to what I think of as a pelvis, but I only really have to do the, the very top edges of it, where I've painted it before, but I just want to make sure the very tips are that little bit more vibrant, that little bit more blue than the surrounding area. And then just like the leg plates, they should be a more gradual fade from black to blue. As for the small plates in the center, it's questionable as to whether this is even worth it, but it's also a question of how much I'm going to do later. So if this ends up being the final color, it's worth just going over it briefly. I'm not sure at this point, so I am just going over it with a thin line. I don't know if you noticed, but I moved my brush back and forth on the palette by doing first one side and then the complete flip side to make it a flat brush, if you see what I mean. And then that allows me to draw a very thin line in the blue paint. Now, before I forget, there's a similar set of very small plates just below the main carapace and just above the tail. This is one of the reasons why I'm painting it this section separately rather than having the tail still attached. So I can actually get in here and paint awkward parts like this. Again, this part might not end up with a lot of the lighter colors later on. So this may actually be it for the final colors on this piece. Now, moving on to the most visually striking area, this enormous carapace on top. Now, I am being a bit more careful to do this in lines on the top, just to A, reinforce it, and B, realize that there actually will be more graduations to this area because it's so big. And so I am being extra careful around this area, even going over the edge like I am now, just to make sure it's okay. The underside, I'm leaving completely black, black by the way. The idea is that it will be largely obscured by the head which gets glued in later so you won't actually really be able to see under there so i'm just leaving it black for the time being and then i'm working on the chimneys which as you saw before i worked on the kind of front side of them with the blue so i'm just doing a slightly smaller area now i'm not being too careful with the brush but if it's a little bit messy it kind of doesn't matter you'll see what i mean when it's done it's uh, it's just adding more paint to the area and reinforcing the color so if there's the the tiniest bit missed out it actually looks more natural and more organic rather than completely messed up like it would if it was say i don't know space marine armor or something like that Now the same principle applies to the other chimneys going down the back. Obviously, as you can see, under the strong lights I'm using, the original coat is not that easy to see, actually. And so just doing this reinforces the color enough that you can actually see it rather better. Unfortunately, you can't easily see this side and I have to be able to see what I'm doing. I am actually off slightly to the side of the camera, so sorry that you couldn't see that for a moment but you'll soon see that it reinforces the blue color on each of the chimneys again now because each of these is being painted in a much smaller area so I'm paint using less paint and fewer brush strokes. It's actually not taking as long as the original coat of blue. And I'm also having to be less careful because I've already marked out the areas that need painting with the first coat. So there's a lot less guesswork. So this will actually be a slightly shorter video.
That having been said, there is one area that is quite involved, and that is this spine that runs down the center. Uh, I'm calling it a spine because that's kind of what it looks like, but it's a series of very tiny overlapping plates in the middle. And of course here, I'm just trying to paint a thin line on each one, rather like I did before, but then I allowed myself to do a slightly thicker line. This has to be much thinner. So you'll see, I just take my time to do each side of each plate and just go down one place after another until it's done. I'm trying to show this to the camera as much as possible, but you can see it is increasingly hard to get to as these chimneys narrow around it. So bear with me on the last few plates because you just have to get the brush in there any way you can. Right, with the torso and legs done, we need to move on to the other pieces. So much like the spine I just did, the tiny overlapping plates on the tail are actually exactly the same. Uh, they just loop around and sort of come back. And then there's the tail tip, of course, which has slightly larger plates on it. principle here is exactly the same it's a bit more open so it's a little easier to get to but just going over each plate both sides maybe a little along each edge and along each tip but otherwise it's just reinforcing what we did before adding a little more of the blue color particularly at the edge of each plate Now it is about this time I'm starting to realize the limitations of this mounting system because this side is very easy to get to, so that's what I'm measuring on. Unfortunately, the opposite side is somewhat next to the wire and then also next to the block of wood, so it's a little bit harder to get to. So as we flip it round, you'll see I have to go in from one side of the wire first and then the other side. There's a little moment of doubt as to how far I got down here. And then I just start going over them one by one. But I mean, the principle is exactly the same as the we did before. One line each side of each small plate, all the way down.
Okay, now we can get to the other side of the wire. I'm doing my best to show it to you, but it's not that easy. Um, but once we're underway, it's actually not that tough. So you just paint a line on each one, and then you're done. Except, of course, for the tail tip, which has a number of overlapping plates on it, so those need reinforcing as well. Now, I have had to steady this with my thumb because it was wobbling about all over the place because of the shape of the wire mount I've got it on. Um, but once stabilised, it's actually okay. that off by painting the couple of overlapping plates on the other side as well and then that's the tail done. Moving on to the head, now obviously the majority of this does not actually have carapace, it's just this line of little plates. Um, if you've seen the pieces so far, this lines up with the spine on top of the torso and then that runs down towards the tail and then this tail continues all the way around and back to the front. So you've got to get all of these to match up, so all I'm doing is exactly the same technique. It's interesting to note on this old metal sculpt though, there is slightly different shapes between the three parts. So these have a distinct line going down the centre, whereas on the body and the tail it's much, much less obvious. So I'm having to just go over the tops as well. That didn't take long, so let's do the matching carapace on the arm. This also shouldn't take terribly long because as you can see, you've already got the guide of where to paint and then it is only this section on the shoulder, so it really shouldn't take too long. because that was so easy. Let's do the corresponding piece on the gun arms. Again, the gun isn't painted in these colours, neither are the arms or the claws, so it's just the shoulder pad carapace in exactly the same pattern. And so whilst it's on my mind, I just do it in the same clip. Right, so with that done, I'm going to do a small extra step. We're going to use this Macrag blue from the Citadel paint range, which is a slightly lighter blue than deep blue. Um, we're going to use that on the large carapace over the head. Because there's such a large area of carapace, it should show up much better and you'll have a more graduated colour from black to lighter blues. So bear with me, just as I get the consistency of the paint right, these Citadel paints are a bit thicker and need a bit of watering down before you use them. And then we just make a star. I'm only going to be painting the area above the head, as I've just pointed to. Uh, just applying it. You can see there's quite a large area of deep blue, so there is a lot of room to add this McCrack blue colour. I think I may do the front edge of the chimneys as well. Same sort of idea as before, it's just with this being a slightly lighter colour, I'm just doing the leading edge of the chimneys, leading, leading edge of the carapace, just in a slightly lighter colour. So I think it will only be the one coat of this, because it's just making it a little bit lighter. So 
So, as this has gone quite well, just in the leading edge of these chimneys, I've decided to do the very tips of the other chimneys as well, as they are also quite large and should have enough room for this to show up later. I haven't done this on several of my other Tyranids, simply because the area of carapace on them, on things like Gene Steelers, Tyranid Warriors and so on, is so much smaller than this that it's actually difficult to do anything like this and actually have it show up when you're actually finished. Of course, as the chimneys get smaller in size as they go down, I'm doing a smaller and smaller area on each one, but it still should just be like the leading tip of each one. So that should show on all of them, but just doing them all for consistency at this point. Alright, that's pretty much done, and I've got a couple of still pictures showing you what it looks like now. I showed it at the start where it only had the one coat and the colour looked kind of weak and now certainly over the head it looks quite strong and even on the leg plates it looks a lot stronger than it was. Right, if you've watched this far, first of all, thank you for watching, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell-shaped icon so you can get notifications about future videos. I hope they will be coming out soon.